reason of why I jumped to the army. Obviously, there's other reasons like the brotherhood that uh, comes with the army, the camaraderie, um, the sense of national pride that you get serving. Um, and just uh, I think there's a lot of job satisfaction that comes with serving in the army, um, in my opinion. So, oh, 100%, yeah. man. I can attest to that. I mean, um, <laughs> if anyone... You know. if, oh, 100%, bro. So, collectively, I did seven years in the British Armed Forces. And, um, I mean, Dan's at the start of his military career, you know, he's right at the beginning, but it's, it, it goes without saying that whether you've been in for a day or, you know, several years, you, um, yeah, I'll get to that in a sec, Andrew. Um, you need, yeah, you definitely have like a sense of, you know, national pride and, um, anyone who, who definitely, you know, answers that call. I mean, it is. It is one of the highest honors, you know, it's one of the most selfless acts that one can take upon themselves. Um, just, I mean, just through training alone, it's a, uh, it's a very, it's a, it's a very hard, it's a very hard process, you know, and I'm sure you guys have heard the expression about hard times create strong men. Well, believe me, the military will, <laughs> you can go into the military as a boy. And as long as you, you know, you show enough grit to, uh, to stick through, you will come out a man. And um, yeah, I mean, we can we can go into our our whole like backstories maybe at a, in a later discourse, a later lecture. Um, but Andrew, so question to me was why did I join the military? Okay, so I'm originally from South Africa. I moved to the UK when I was a young boy, and you know the 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 life that I have been blessed to have here in the UK, which I just would not have if I stayed in South Africa. Um, was was all due to you know well one my mum being a British citizen but also the UK the country giving me that ability to to carry on so uh, I wanted to give back you know I I also always wanted to join from the time I was little I always wanted to be um, in the services and I was always medically inclined so I thought I'd bridge the two together and join the military as a as a medic and yeah that's that's basically my ambition man you know you just you get an idea you just go ahead with it so yeah yes hey Shek, you from sa hey how's it bro nice man whereabouts are you from i'm a durban boy just fyi but um yeah let's let's crack on with this okay pretoria hey my boy is out in the mainland what if you're not really nationalistic, but you like the army? Should you join the army or nay? Okay, so I mentioned this in a, in the previous lecture, and I'll say this again. Do not join the military if you are joining for a for like a, a fleeting emotion, yeah? If you just like the military, I'd say that's not good enough. You need to have something more that drives you through because you're going to go through experiences that are going to test your mind, body, and soul. And I mean, if you're not nationalistic, that's fine. You know, a lot of people also join because it's a, it is also technically a form of employment. I know guys that I went through basic training with who literally had nothing else to turn to in life. And so they enlisted. Now, whether or not that's the right reason, I mean, I can't say that's, that's for them. But if you're joining, you know, for like a fickle minded reason, I'd say just don't, man. Don't do that. Don't put yourself through it. Dan, what's your what's your opinion on that? Seeing as you're going in. Oh yeah, I um I absolutely agree with you. Um, I don't think you have to be you know fully nationalistic and um you know be this huge patriot and absolutely um fully hundred percent love your country to join. I mean, there's heaps of benefits with joining. Um, as we're going to talk about the discipline that you will build in there and. Um, the brotherhood that you make and I think um, and what you stated before about not joining just off of uh, fleeting emotions I completely agree with you um, some people uh, romanticize the idea of uh, joining the military and when they get there it's a whole different story to what they thought it was going to be and you know I'm yet to experience that so I can't talk much about that but um, at least that's one of the things that I've um, heard from a lot of the people that have joined. So 
but yeah, I completely agree with what you said. So. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you have to understand that joining the services, and, and this is all services, by the way, not just the military, you know, whether you join the police force, the fire service, the Navy, the Air Force, even... Um, even the ambulance service, like over here, especially especially in the UK. I mean, I, I can't I can't speak for other countries, but there is a tremendous amount of selflessness that's required when you are, um, you know, when you're serving, because to serve is to put others before you. So you need to have a really strong why. You know, we always go back to this, um, which which actually very nice and neatly kind of brings me into the whole discourse on discipline. So before you, you know, before you even think about implementing discipline, you got to really ask yourself, with the objective that you have in mind, whatever it is, you have to ask yourself why, right? And uh, I mean, da Dan and I have definitely gone through this, uh, this aspect, especially when it came to joining up. So, um, you know, you, you really have to tap into that aspect. You have to find out your why. Um, I think we I think we did go over it briefly, but for anyone who who missed it, Dan, just please, what's your why for doing what you're doing right now? So my why, okay, well, there's quite a few uh, reasons. I've spent a lot of time thinking about my why, um, especially knowing that I will, you know, uh, hopefully in the future, fingers crossed. Uh, special forces selection uh you need a strong wife for that to will yourself forward um and for most of my life i've been the extremely skinny weak kid um i was always known as that kid growing up um in all of my all of my classes in school um i was extremely extremely skinny i was a stick and i've always wanted to joined the military, but I figured uh, there's no way that I could possibly make it. You know, um, I'm destined to be like this for the rest of my life. And one day I figured, I read a quote somewhere, I can't really remember um, specifically, but I read, it was a quote that said, why not me? And I really reflected upon that, you know, if anyone, if anyone could do it, why not me? And what happened was uh, that was my that was my why to keep me going forward. Why not me? You know, I started picking up the fork, started getting my food down, putting on weight, going to the gym, putting on muscle. And I started to fill out my frame, and I thought, well, hold on a second. If I'm able to, if I'm able to do this and track my progress and see that I'm, you know, working towards my goal, I can definitely make this happen. So. That was um my big why was just to prove myself to prove myself doubt wrong. Um, I feel that I think that's been the major driving the major driving force for why I am doing what I am doing. So yeah, you know what, bro? Um, <laughs> your your reasons are pretty much like I, I think I think like there's almost like a universal sort of like mindset. <laughs> Because I was exactly the same. I was skinny brown kid who you, I mean, yeah, okay. I was bullied in school by, by my own friends, I might add. You know, my own friends um, used to make fun of me for for wanting to join the military. Because they were like, oh, look, look at you, you skinny brown kid. Like, you can't even, you know, <clears throat> kind of like climb a rope. You can't even do a rope, a rope, a rope climb, God. Um, you know, you need to be strong and like big and muscular and all this stuff. And the funny thing about that was, um, just to cut that story short, is all my friends at the time who had massive ambitions, one guy wanted to join the NBA. I mean, he was very athletically um, driven. There was another one who was just incredibly smart. He wanted to be an astronomer. They, <laughs> they gave in to their life of degenerate behavior. And I ended up persevering and going into the military. And I use that as like my, you know, like my, I call it like the Steve Rogers effect. You know, it's like the, the whole like concept of Captain America, um, how he was the skinny kid who just wanted to do something good and he was just beaten down by everybody. But he used that to fuel himself. And I mean, that at the core is, 
is discipline. Because like you said, you started eating right, you started training right, you started to work on your mindset and you just kept that goal, you know, right in the center of your, of your focus. You know, that's, uh, that's so important. That was, you know, that was exactly my why. If, if, if anyone can do this or if he can do it, why can't I? You know, um, mine was a bit more emotionally driven though. <laughs> Yeah, it's um, it's definitely uh been a huge driving uh force for me, and that's that's why I basically initiated the you know that path for me, and that's how I've kept all well, that's a part of how I kept uh, my discipline in terms of achieving my goals. You always have to resort to your why because every time, and there will come a point in time where you want to stop, and you want to just uh lay down you know give up quit working towards whatever goal you may have set in your head if you don't have a solid why what's the point you know you, you clearly don't want it bad enough if you don't have a reason on why you're doing what you're doing so i think it's very valuable in sitting down you know however long you need and just really thinking about you can you can journal over this as well just um thinking about three or four reasons um, and one big reason as to why you are uh, doing what you're doing, why you're trying to achieve the goal that you've set for yourself. Yeah, hundred percent. Okay, we have a few questions. Um, just Dave, I, I think I, I think I answered that. So, yeah. So basically, just to go over that, if anyone is us is if anyone is thinking about this themselves, before you you know, before sh before you go, you should really think about your why. Like, literally, sit down, ask yourself why. You know, have a notepad out of your journal and then write it all down. Like as thought enters your mind, transmute that thought into muscle movements in your wrist that moves the pen across the paper. Like I've just broken it down very mechanically there because that is exactly what you need to do, right? It's like, um, like take the, the, the videos where Hamza was talking about, you know, just staring at your wall. A lot of the time you have to do that. And I mean, Dan's just said he's done it. I I definitely did that. You know, I, I found myself like, just almost like staring into space, man. Just like thinking, thinking real deep about, you know, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? And um, funnily enough, during basic training, I don't know if you, if you might experience this, Dan, but when I went through basic training, we actually were introduced to journaling. So, um, you know, you've probably, you're probably going in with a competitive edge because uh, I didn't know anything about self-improvement. I didn't know anything about, you know, this stuff going on right now. When I joined um, for the first time when I was, what, 19, I, um, yeah, I didn't know anything about like journaling my emotions and my thoughts and everything, but it became a requirement, right? And instead of a journal, they called it your best book, but it's exactly the same thing. And we had to really like each and every day write down like our wins of the day the things that we went through, you know, our struggles, what do we, what do we, you know, hope to achieve from the week, et cetera. Um, I'll share, I'll share this story about like how discipline saved my life a little later on. But um, yeah, you know, just, just answering that question, you, 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 you 100%, you should, everybody should. And it's not even if you just want to do something big, like join the military, remember, everything is relative guys. So for like the likes of Dan and myself, where I will, one of our biggest challenges was to join the military. Yours might be like, you know, taking that job offer or deciding to go to college like 200 miles away from home. And before you actually pull the trigger on it, you should really ask, you should really ask yourself and really sit down with yourself and just ask yourself why. There's so much power and emphasis on the importance of asking that question. I cannot, I cannot stress enough. Um, very quickly before we move on, X Emray, can I teach you how to journal in the military way? So there is no military way, bro. You um, you simply write what you think personally. You know, you uh, just come. It just comes to mind. I mean, I suppose there are different ways to break it down. Like Dan, how do you how do you journal? What's your structure if you have one? Okay, this is uh, okay. So basically, um. Well, each morning I do my, you know, gratitude journaling. So I write down everything that I'm grateful for, um, which I'm sure a lot of you do anyways. Um, and 
at the end of the day is where I sit down and really crack into my journal. Um, I just write a summary. I summarize my day, um, the events that happened, just so I can look back on it and remember. Um, and how I felt uh, with those events happening. And I do what's called an after action report. Um, and I basically write down the things that I did well and the things that I need to improve. And um, that's a huge part of my journal because it allows me to, you know, continue the things that I did well and um, uh, try and improve the things that I didn't do so well. And that was a, uh, I think that's been a huge help with my journal. Um, but uh, that's the main structure of it, really. It's just the, the summary of my day and um, things I did well and what I can improve on. Yeah, so um, there are different ways that you can you can journal. Like Dan's is actually very closely related to um, to like writing military military reports, right? You have like a like a heading. And then you've got like a few like bullet points and then the summary, right? For me personally, uh, the way that I journal now is, so I'll talk you through it. So when I wake up and I open my journal, I write um, a little like subheading called overall. So I date, I write the date, I write the day and everything. And then I write an overall, right? And then I give a percentage to that. And that percentage is, is directly relevant to my mood. So how you know how energetic i'm feeling you know just sort of how productive etc i'm feeling because this this is all important to take into consideration because this is how you, you hallmark and you time you time stamp your um your moods right and just sort of what sort of energy you're starting the day off with and then i write the first number that comes into my head out of a percentage of 100 right so so some days i mean like yesterday I got up and I was like 49% because I had a pretty, pretty troubled sleep. But you see that, that then sets the precedent for, for me then to be very mindful on how I'm going to carry out for the rest of the day, because I know that I've got low energy, for example. So I need to do things that are going to help bring me uh, to a, to a point of balance, or at least like tip me into a state of productivity. So I will just make sure that I work harder in the gym, right? I'll make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm eating regularly and I'm sticking to my macros because all those little things really have an impact. And then throughout the day, I will journal the, the highlights of my day. I give gratitude at the end of the day. And then I, I put down, similar to Dan's after action report, I put down two points, what have I learned about myself? And then what can I change about them, um, about myself? And that I found has helped me significantly. It's helped me with mental breakthroughs. It's helped me come to like different realizations of sort of where I am in life. And it's also, it's, it's accountability at the end of the day, right? It is uh, accountability. And um, th this, is, I, I, this is like the main, the main point I want to drive with this lecture is motivation is great. Cause I, I think someone said like, um, <clears throat> can you give some motivational quotes? I mean, bro, I can, I can drop motivational quotes like f for days, but the harsh reality of that is, um, motivation won't do much for you, right? Because motivation is tied directly to an emotion discipline is tied directly to action. And this is the thing about, um, this is the thing about like, you know, soldiers or people who, who, are, who are going into the forces. There's nothing special about us. We're human beings, right? You know, um, I mean, Dan just said like, he's, a, he's an 18 year old dude from Australia who's going into the Australian army with the ambitions to join special forces. Before he had that ambition, he was he, he was still Dan from whereabouts are you from in Osborough, If you're happy to disclose, oh, I'm close to Sydney, man. Yeah, so you know Dan Dan from Sydney, basically. I'm I was Shravan SK from from London, and I always was. But um, the thing that separates 
is the action. And that's what discipline is. Discipline will take you to places where motivation can't. What's your take on that, Dan? Mm, yeah, with discipline and motivation, um, a lot of people are saying they can't hear me. Um, maybe I... Mike's good? I'm not too sure, but I don't know what's happening with that. No, no, okay. they're saying it's fine. It's fine. Oh, a lot of people are saying it's fine. Yeah. Okay. With motivation and discipline, well, the thing is, um, a, a lot of people ask, uh, I took this from, I'm sure you're familiar with Jocko Willink. Um, oh yeah, big jock. Watching, um, yeah, watching one of his videos, a lot of people ask how to get the desire to have discipline, right? And the thing is, discipline is, it's a choice that you make every single moment of every day, right? You have to wake up and say that I'm going to be disciplined and you have to constantly make that choice. Whether you have the motivation to do something or not, you have to tell yourself that you're going to follow through with that action. And that's exactly why it's hard. That's what makes discipline discipline. And uh, it's hard because you can lose it in an instant, right? If you went to the gym for a year, you've got all your gains, you know, you're looking good in the mirror. And let's say you take a week off. You're not going to lose everything instantly, right? Um, you're still going to have a lot of the gains that you've made throughout all that consistency. The thing with discipline is you can lose that at any moment. You could be disciplined for a year, two years, however long. And as soon as you stop and decide to to fall back and you know not to, not commit with to consistency, you lose that straight away. And that's exactly what makes discipline discipline um, compared to motivation. It's uh it's hard to maintain because it's exactly it's hard to maintain. So uh, yeah, motivation is is fleeting. It'll come and go, just as you said. It's an emotion. It's tied to an emotion. So. You uh, you can't rely on it. Nah, emotions are too um, one. They're unpredictable. They are too volatile in nature. Even emotions of elation, because emotions of elation and you know immense, intense positivity and and happiness in a in a situation where you know you need to be quite re like quite regimented um, can can actually lead to you dropping in in discipline because that feeling of euphoria leads to complacency. You know, let's, let's bring it back to that. Bring her, speaking of quotes, bringing, bringing it back to the quote of, you know, hard times create strong men, right? And hard times mm -hmm. breed, hard times require discipline for strong men to thrive, right? In doing so, you create good times. But you see, when, when people indulge too much in the good times, it creates weakness. It creates complacency. Right? It creates a sense of um, getting too comfortable, right? People get stuck in their comfort zones and that in turn creates weak men. Um, Shek asked, asked the question, so before joining the military, did you have any addiction problems that you had to overcome before during your time there? And is the military a good way to overcome addictions to help discipline yourself? I'm going to be, okay. So I'm going to be completely honest and transparent with you guys. So before I joined the military, um, I was, <clears throat> I was 18, 19 years old. I had, I had just come out of my first relationship with my girlfriend and <laughs> in doing so I developed a porn addiction because, um, I, I lost my virginity at 18. I got very, you know, kind of like siphoned into the vortex of feeling feminine energy around me I had a very feminine girlfriend um too feminine for me to handle actually and it ended up with us having a pretty hard breakup i became a bit of a fuck boy i started turning into something quite toxic and in doing so i developed a porn addiction i was also very heavily into video games i've been playing video games since i was maybe nine years old. I think my first game was GTA Vice City. So yeah, imagine imagine the effects that has on a young nine-year-old brain. So uh, I had been very deep into the video game and like the whole like porn thing. Um, <laughs> is the military a good place to overcome your addictions? 
I would say it's more about the people that are around you and the support system you have because the military is a place where one of two extremes can take place. You can either become a very routine, organized, you know, straight-laced. It's almost like rehab on steroids, right? So long as you put the work in. Or it can turn into like a black pillar's paradise. It is, it can be extremely morbid. It's extremely intense in terms of the pressures that are systemically placed on you, okay? Um, that in turn has a knock-on effect on your self-esteem, mentality, the way you view the world. Um, I know I know some people who are like hardcore, like, like I'm talking like hardcore, like hentai watching like incels who were in the military, like, it's 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 a it can be a breeding ground for really bad habits too, and um, yeah, it it I think the military is more a place where you need to cultivate the right skills and surround yourself with the right people. So similar to to normal life, you know. Uh, so yeah, I hope hope that answered your question, Dan, bro. You're um mm-hmm. <laughs> you're at the beginning of this whole journey. I mean. If you're if you're happy to discuss, do you have any addiction? Oh yeah, I don't have any of those addictions now, by the way. Just just to clarify. But yeah, what about I yourself, have Dan? The exact same addictions as you, brother. Um, <laughs> to a T. I was literally the exact same thing. Um, I remember back in, I guess you guys would call it middle school. Um, I'd play video games. I'd jump on my PlayStation into a party with my friends, and I'd game till the early hours of the morning, three a.m., four a.m. Yeah. Um, I'd wake up skip breakfast it was terrible and um i found that having this sort of purpose in my life something that i'm working towards um where the lifestyle is regimented anyways as i'm building towards that i've seen that i've fixed a lot of the problems that i've had again i'm not i don't have any of those addictions anymore as well um only thing i can say i'm addicted to now is the gym (laughs) <laughs> so that's not a bad addition uh, to have <laughs> yeah it's definitely on the better side um so yeah just uh yeah had the exact same as you um committed to working towards my purpose and in turn i've sort of overcome those i have no experience personally in the military so i can't say whether or not it's helpful in terms of overcoming addictions but um from what you said it sounds sounds accurate there's a good and a bad side to it for sure Oh yeah. I mean, going into infantry as well, bro, you're going to meet some, you're going to meet some characters. That's for sure. Um, Mm -hmm. so before, before I was a medic, I, 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 I'd served with an infantry unit and some of the blokes there were just mental. Um, and then also being a medic, you know, I was attached to a unit that, uh, it's classed as teeth arms, which is basically like a, an infantry, uh, predominantly infantry base. So yeah, the culture, like, very heavily leaked over um yeah it can be very incestuous someone said i heard men and women sleep with each other on the navy boats bro it's it's all over it's all over and you see the thing is the military is like the military is like almost like its own cult it's almost like its own cult and within that cult you've got such a such a different view of life Right. So that's another thing. You know, it's not just like another job. It's a lifestyle. I've said this before. And when you're in this lifestyle, you you well and truly get like like covered in the culture. You know, you, you really start to see like the way people move, they they act, they even talk differently. And like incestuous like sex, like sleeping sleeping with each other within each uh um each unit is very rife you know there's a lot of cheating that also takes place so any advice that i can give to any guys here going into the military uh stay single stay single for for at least the the vast majority like especially if you're young like yeah especially if you're young just just stay single have your fun and all that stuff especially if you deploy to to other areas but um it'll save you a whole lot of heartache notake i served in the british armed forces so UK. I was a medic in the UK. And Dan is in the Dan is going to be in the Australian 
forces. Oh, they're bad bitches in the military. Hey, there there are some bad bitches. Um, Dan, those Aussie girls though, man. What are they saying? Oh, yeah, no, nah, I just, I have no interest in, uh, you know, going to hook up with um the barracks bunnies, as they call them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, they... to each their own, I suppose, to each their own. Oh, good, good, strong head there, man. It'll, it'll save you from a lot of strife and prevent you from getting the clap. Because, yeah, they're, they're, they're festering grounds. <laughs> but... uh. Yeah, I mean that that's yeah, I mean there are there are some like baddies there, but trust me, man, we in the UK we have this expression. Girls in the military, they're either bikes or dykes. And um yeah, that's a <laughs> it's a very accurate expression. There are very 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 few girls who um stay monogamous. So yeah, exactly. Adonis doesn't focus on the baddies. So yeah, I mean at least I answered the answered the question there. But um, I wanted to move on to this next point. So I, I said earlier on that discipline saved my life. And I want to get into this. Because <clears throat> the, thing, the thing about discipline is that it's so, it's so easy to talk about it. It's so easy to, to relish in it and romanticize it. Make it seem like, you know, we've all, we've all seen a David Goggins motivation speech. We've all seen a Jocko Willink podcast, right? We've all like seen some of those like tactical YouTubers out there. Um, and, you know, when they talk about discipline, they talk about their war stories, they talk about what they've done is uh, it's very good to, to just kind of like get, get, you know, engrossed in it. Right. But I just want to talk to you about just how important discipline actually is when it comes to embedding it in your moral character. So I never used to be a disciplined kid. Uh, when I was a kid, I, I used to just kind of like, just mooch about very, like had very little time for anything in the day. I, uh, I remember, I actually remember this one point, like, like so clear because it was one of the biggest turning points in my life. Uh, just before I joined the military, it was summer, right? Probably the, the, the height of summer when I should have been out socializing and I was in my room just binge watching Sons of Anarchy for the first time. I cleared seven seasons in under two weeks, right? Bearing in mind, that's like an hour per episode, 12 to 13 episodes per season, seven seasons in under two weeks. That's like a season and a half in like, what? Like two, two every like two days, every two, three days, which is fucking disgusting, if that. Um, so... Yeah, my life was in a very bad, my life was going down a very bad degenerate road, right? Now, I want to fast forward to a point, which was my, actually my last post before I left the military. Um, again, I was in a very, very dark spot. And it got to the point where, you know, I, I was, I was actually so like down bad in life in general that I was contemplating, you know, self-termination, right? You can, you guys can put that together. Uh, cause I have to keep, I have to keep the expletives like somewhat PC because this is going up on YouTube. But, um, but yeah, you know, I, I wanted to basically end it. And one thing that just resonated with me was the routine that kept me disciplined. And I used that to just bring myself out of that situation. Um, yeah, Andrew, there's going to be a link. So once this is done, I'm going to uh, render the video, upload it to my channel, and then I'll post it back into the Discord. Um, so yeah, man, you know, that's that was basically like just a really dark time. And I simply just focused on the, the routine that was taught to me, which was, you know, you wake up. So wake up, 0500. 0500 is 0530 is when you do your ablutions, brush your teeth, shave shower right get dressed by 0 6 30 you go into the mess hall or you go into the cookhouse to have breakfast okay before i did that i make sure my room was immaculate as if it's going to be ready for inspection you just when you have such a routine drilled into you or when you practice something for so long that it becomes your routine that becomes your discipline that can be the thing that really pulls you out of a dark hole 
And you know, I just wanted to emphasize like this is what discipline can do to you. It can literally save your life. It saved me from from taking my own life. Um, but yeah, that's you know that was just like my little point I wanted to drive home on discipline there. Not to make it too deep, but I just want you guys to understand that there's something deeper than just feeling motivation and discipline. Dan, what's your take on that, man? Mm, I don't think any of my points would uh, would differ from yours. You about how it saved your um, your life. I I think I, I definitely feel the same way in terms of how it saved mine. If I was if I was uh, see, I used to binge YouTube instead of instead basically I used to just lie on my side in bed all day watching YouTube, right? The time went on and um, building that sort of regimented structure to my day definitely um, made me feel a lot better and it saved me. Um, and I do something which some of you may be familiar with and it's called time blocking. And I just use a Google Calendar. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure there's other apps that work with that, but um, I structure my day so that at a certain time from this point on to this point, I, you know, I wake up, I make my bed, um, brush my teeth, shower, and then from this point, um, you know, I go make breakfast and I sort of structure my day so that I've got some plan to follow. So I feel like if I do not have that sort of regimented structure to my day, I sort of just drift about. Um, and that's also what appealed to me in the army. They do that to you automatically, right? So no matter what you get told to do this by a certain time, you get told to be here. Um, you get to you get told to do this task by this time, and um, you don't have to be in the the military or the army to follow that sort of structure. You can do that to your own your own day. You know whether you're going to school or um, university or you know whatever stage of life you're in. You can always add a little bit of discipline to it. That's for sure. Yeah. That's, 100%. Uh, that's my take on him. No, 100%, dude. Um, Bambi says, how to stop the routine from getting dull if we're in uni or school? <clears throat> so you can you can mix up your your routine a little bit, okay? So long as you stick to the, the core aspects that sort of build the foundations and structure of your routine. Let's say, for example, um, so if you're... So if you're in uni, right, you can change the the periods that you that you study for. Okay, like me personally, I only like to study like when I'm studying for exams. I only like to study like an hour max, but I'll do that every single day. Okay, and I'll carve out like a block in the day to do my studies. Okay, and I'll go deep into that. To change things up, I mean, you know, you can introduce different things into your routine as like external activities. So let's say your core mechanics are um, going to the gym, studying, meal prepping, right? Let's just say you're you're someone who's on a on a on a hard um, like a hardcore like program, right? So what you can do is mix things up. So as part of like your your meal plan, you know. By all means, feel free to even like go out with your friends, right? Go out with your friends. Make sure that you have the core meal that you that you want to to like introduce into your diet. But then go out with your friends at the same time, or go out for a for a spontaneous walk, right? Or go for a bike ride. When you go to the gym, instead of just like say going through your 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 mainstream workout. Why don't you join in on a class? That's what I do sometimes. Sometimes I just, you know, nothing like sometimes nothing's nothing major, but like I'll go and do a hit class, for example. Um, you know, you, you you can do little things to mix up your routine to stop them from being mundane. You could also maybe change up the times that, say, for example, you do your study sessions. So instead of studying like first thing in the morning before you carry on with your day maybe try studying like mid-afternoon 
or you know in like the early evening time or reverse those just play around with your time slots and um and see how that goes Dan, do you have any uh, any points to add on to that if i'm going to be honest with you for me personally um my i don't find ways to make my routine a bit more exciting it's probably best if you do find little things that you can do um but for me personally i just like doing the tasks and getting them done that's what satisfies me right um and uh i don't the only things that excite me in my routine personally is um doing the things that i love such as working out going to the gym and that's already rewarding enough for me so i can't really say on what ways you can do to excite or improve your sort of routine especially if you're going to university or anything like that but um yeah as you said just try and uh mix things up a little i think that's the key to making it a bit more fun that's for sure yeah 100 percent. i mean it's all pre- personal preference also sam's just rolled through what's going on man hello what's happening bro how you doing i'm okay i thought i'd just join and uh have a listen you know yeah of course man more more than you're more than welcome brother we're um we're actually talking on the subject of discipline just how it's impacted our lives now you were you're someone who's also quite structured on his his own self-development journey so would you like to share some of your like insights as to how discipline's shaped your life bro um i think we talked about discipline last time right yeah, we were talking a little bit about discipline and also um, mentality. So yeah, it, it linked in. But like for anyone that missed out on the last lecture, or even if um, even if you could share like a, a few points like to your structure that keeps you disciplined, like what what gets you out of bed on a day where it's dark, cold, and rainy. We have plenty of those in the UK. Uh-huh. What gets you know what gets you to the gym when it's pissing down sideways and it's like four degrees. And everybody's just cold, miserable, and depressed. <laughs> well, an interesting spin on this. I said something quite similar last time, I think, but my discipline's actually pretty fucking terrible. I'm not going to lie. Um, so I've structured my life around um, basically sort of doing things in a hierarchy of enjoyment. So I leave the thing I enjoy the most to the end of the day, and I, I am not going to do that thing until I've done the things which I enjoy less. Um, the only, um, the only caveat to that is the gym because I actually enjoy the gym. The gym is the best part of my day, and I also think that's a pretty good hack as well. If you just fall in love with the thing which you're struggling with, then you won't struggle with it at all. So, um, I get up and go straight to the gym, which is again favorite part of my day. Um, but then after that, it's like you know I've got I do three deep work blocks a day. And uh, I do the, the first two deep work blocks, I do the thing which I want to do less, you know what I mean? So then I actually have look like, I, I have my own personal projects at the end of the day, which I'm actually quite looking forward to doing. So it makes pushing through the first two blocks actually a lot easier because I'm just thinking about, oh, I want to be able to do my things, right? So um, my point is my discipline is actually pretty shit. Uh, <laughs> so I've I've sort of just built around the fact that my discipline is shit, and uh, just just structured things in that sort of weird hierarchy, hierarchy, hi- hierarchy um, sense. Um, yeah, I can't really fucking speak right now, to be honest. But yeah, <laughs> it's all good, man. It's been a hard day, but uh, but yeah, exactly. You see that, guys. So. <laughs> Sam Sam figured out his why, right? He wants to he wants to improve. And this is this is like another like really fundamental part. You have to really understand yourself in order to master your own discipline because discipline comes in different shapes and forms, right? So for guys like myself and Dan where you know, okay, I'll speak for myself here, but I I I can hazard a guess that Dan would agree. I'm like almost like borderline autistic with the way that I structure my discipline. Okay. And that's not to, that's not like an insult or to like sound edgy or anything. I like, I literally have like, I'm pretty sure like I had OCD before I even joined the military, 
but the military just like ramped it up right and um and with me it's like i will i personally have a study planner and in my study planner i write down my points of all the um all the tasks that i want to get done throughout the day and then i i talk about the um like the the priority like the priority objectives that i have to achieve before my day ends and then i sort of categorize and and set things up that way right but before my day is complete i have to round off my daily tasks right so i have to hit the gym i have to make sure i drink enough water i have to do my skincare routine i have to read a little bit right whether that's in the form of studying or through a book i have to make sure that i hit my macros so i do not go to sleep even if even if it's like two in the morning, I will not go to sleep until I've hit my, all my objectives. It's not the, it's probably not the most healthiest outlook or the way to adapt, but that's part of my, um, out of necessity of dopamine. No, so, so that is out of my discipline because I know that I have a goal. I have objectives. Like I want to, I want to carry on with my lean bulk, for example, I want to learn skills that are going to make me a more uh, versatile and functional YouTuber. I want to learn skills that are going to help me with these lectures, for example, to to gain value, to give and share value, right? And so my daily tasks are like a non-negotiable. You can get those... Um, you can get those... Um, you, can, you can be negotiable in certain tasks... And then you can be non-negotiable in other tasks, right? Um, that's that's just the way that I have my approach to discipline because I know my nature. I know that if I go to bed without having a workout, I'm going to like have a like a mini, almost like a like a mini meltdown, <laughs> right? Not not in like a really like hazardous way, but I just I just think no, like that's unacceptable. You can't make exceptions for certain behaviors. And that's part of discipline there. Did I did I experience racism as a brown guy in the army? Uh, a little bit, yeah. You know, ra- racism is everywhere, guys. That's the thing. It's um, it's just one of those those factors, facts of life that you're just gonna have to deal with. You know, you're not gonna be everybody's like cup of tea, so to speak. It's not um, it's not about who likes you at the end of the day, right? Part of discipline is also understanding that. Not many people are going to get you. A lot of people aren't going to respect what you do, but who gives a shit? Because you're on your mission. And that's all that matters. Uh, Dan, I think somebody's asked you to talk about uh, like a snowball effect, something? Yeah, so um, this is... Uh, I like to talk about what's called the compound effect, or at least that's how I label it, um, just to cover off what you and what Jay said earlier. Um, so basically, the compound effect, right? That small, smart choices made consistently over time, which end up making huge differences in the long run. Um, so a way to build discipline with that is you need consistency, right? So the first thing that you like, normally this is a spin on it. Um, people have all these habit trackers, right? You see it all over in this server. You've got your habit tracker with um, eight or nine different habits that you are trying to tick off. So, you know, you wake up, cold shower, meditate, gratitude journal, all that stuff, right? And that's all good. This is just a spin on it, though. Let's say you have like a physical notebook, okay? And you list down, you list down actions that you would like to take every day in order to become the person that you want to be. So if you want to get more fit, you write down, go to the gym. If you want to be an avid reader, you write read on that list right and then you add a bunch of small actions like you guys said that you do in the beginning of the day so things like brushing your teeth making your bed shining your shoes just really simple tasks simple mundane tasks right and you write that down and the important thing is that you choose one of these tasks and for the whole week no matter what happens you will do that task so let's say for whatever reason you decide to um you, you want to make your bed, right? No matter what happens in the world, in your life, you will make your bed. doesn't matter. You got, you got fired from your job, you make your bed. Um, 
<clears throat> the girl that you're talking to begs you to come over, doesn't matter. You make your bed first, right? And it's it's it seems like a mundane, easy task, but that's the mentality that you want. You are going to do it no matter what, no matter what happens. And over time, this builds up. This is the compound effect, right? You go for a week doing that task every single day. The second week, you have two tasks that you've done every single day, no matter what. The third week, three tasks. And then you start to add those big tasks on top of that, like going to the gym, reading more. And it compounds over time. And eventually, before you know it, you'll be doing all these little, these little tasks that you want to do in the beginning of the day that will set you up for success later on. Um, and exactly what I'm relating it to the army, it's exactly what happens, right? You learn how to stand correctly, how to say yes correctly, how to make your bed perfectly. And a lot of people find these tasks pretty meaningless, but there's a much higher purpose behind that. And it's um, the purpose of executing these like really small acts as both you and what Jay said earlier is the proper way to practice your discipline in my opinion. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's the snowball or compound effect pretty much. Yeah. Um, no, perfectly illustrated, man. Uh, Shek asked, so was following a, following a routine during my time in the army difficult at the beginning? As if, if I was trying to build a physique. Okay. So, so yes, initially, because you know, think about it. Going from a, going from a lifestyle where I was wa I was going to sleep at like what <laughs> six a.m. and waking up sometimes at like five p.m. is ridiculous. To now a very structured, very by the numbers, routine. You know, it's a very drill focused lifestyle. So you're up at like five a.m. and then by five thirty, you you need to have washed, brushed your face everything and you're, you're ready you know you're in your uniform for inspection at 0600 um the routine is hard and this is the thing right discipline when it comes to discipline the first two weeks i say this to everybody even on my coaching calls the first two weeks of adopting any new habit or routine is going to be the hardest right that is when your your brain is is going to like start screaming and shaking and basically throw a tantrum okay because that's the comfort that your brain is accustomed to thinking hang on something is wrong right it's going to think that it's under attack and it's going to really try and rack you out of the routine that you're now trying to instill so you have to really have the mental fortitude to bring yourself over and around those obstacles every time right you maintain that for two weeks and after that you find that the brain then starts to, you know, absorb that because our brains are very, like the human mind is fickle, right? If you are exposed to something for long enough, you will eventually start to become that. You start to think that. You start to adopt the the environment, right? Because this is part of our, like, our survival instincts. So when it comes to sort of instilling new routines you really have to shake out the the former way of mentally processing your um you know your your current lifestyle your current emotions but yeah guys honestly read <laughs> read can't hurt me by david goggins and even if you're not joining the military you'll gain so much depth in um into what discipline can do for you this discipline will like you ask any any ceo if there were any like you know billionaires or ceos that were currently in in this chat you ask them how do they do it they would all tell you that they just had the discipline they had the discipline to just constantly just do the same thing and discipline is routine right and routine is going to be mundane but part of discipline is also understanding that the process right now you know we say fall in love with the process because the outcome is going to be so much greater the longer that you stay locked in it's uh it is very well in essence like instant versus delayed gratification what are your thoughts on that dan yeah i um I, one thing that i would like to say is 
just to add on a little bit to what you said is for, like falling in love with the process, right? I think if you can manage to do that, um, do it. If you can love what you are doing, you know, no, no matter how small that task is, if you can, um, if you can love doing it, then it'll make your life a lot easier. I can most definitely say that if I didn't fall in love with going to the gym and working out, I probably wouldn't have, you know, quote unquote, disciplined my way through it. Um, I don't know, but I, I do know that loving working out and actually going to the gym has helped a thousand fold with um, that sort of journey. So definitely, uh, if you can fall in love with the process, it'll it'll make it that much that much easier for you, that much better. Yeah, one hundred percent. So, what I'd like to do now is go over a few different methods that we can use to ensure that we stay disciplined. I mentioned a few. I mean, a few have been mentioned over this uh, over this lecture. Okay, personally for myself i so it all starts with 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 me setting an alarm right i still set an alarm because my sleep quality hasn't been the greatest but i'm working on that but part of me taking accountability is making sure that when i set my alarm i i put my phone on my desk so it's away from my bed so when it goes off i have no choice but to get out of bed in order to turn it off and once I've turned it off, there, I'm, I'm awake and I'm ready to start my day, right? So everything starts with an alarm. Another uh, point that I do to hold myself accountable and bring about discipline is, again, I've mentioned my planner. Every night, the night before the next day, I write down all my tasks of the objectives that I have for that day. And I write down everything in in priority, right? What is the most What's the highest top priority objective that I need to complete before the day is done versus what is something that, you know, is like my negotiable, right? Whether I do it today or do it tomorrow, it's not too big of a deal. For example, like going to the bank to deposit some money, right? It's like today, for example, because I knew I had to hit the gym and I had to do some other things. That was my negotiable task. But my non-negotiables were going to the gym, making sure that I, you know, I ate um, ate my my meals on time, etc., and then also planning and prepping for this uh, for this lecture, because in a second year I'm going to I'm going to just share with you a goal of mine that's been uh, it's been a project of mine for a little while. Okay, but uh, before we get into that, Dan, what about yourself? What sort of what sort of things do you do you use? What sort of tools do you use to keep yourself disciplined and you know, locked in. A huge thing for me, which I'm sure a lot of you guys do already, is visualization and envisioning you succeeding, both you succeeding and you failing and comparing the two, right? So I'm sure a lot of you guys are chasing your dream physiques and, um, you know, you're, you're sitting down in the kitchen, whether you're, you could be bulking, you could be cutting, recomposition, whatever, right? And you're striving towards that dream physique. You need to have the discipline to pick up the fork and put that food in your mouth when you don't feel like it, or again, the opposite, refrain from eating too much. And a huge, a huge thing that has helped me is visualization. Whenever I don't feel like doing something, I think about where I will be in, let's say, five years' time, right? Um, I can envision my success, how I'm going to feel during that moment, um, what I'm going to look like, the emotions that are going through me. And I visualize all of that, right? And then I also visualize if I had no discipline and I ended up failing how I would feel if I didn't end up reaching my goal. And both those emotions that I get from visualizing both success and failure It'll push me and I can guarantee it'll push you as well to, uh, to continue with that discipline and working towards your goals. I think visual, visualization is massive and um, I can contribute that to a lot of the actions that I've taken to work towards my goals personally. Um, I'd say that's probably one of the most important things for me besides uh, what you mentioned. 
Yeah, I just want to actually, you know, you said visualizations and that just led me on to uh, this thought, just to roll on to onto what you said. So part of visualizations, I've also mentioned this in my in my lecture on mindset and that is, you know, develop or create a vision board, right? For those of you who don't know what a vision board is, it's, it's quite literally like a collage of all the different aspects of your life in its like ultimate form. So your dream body, you know, your dream like career goals, your dream financial situation, your dream social situation, your dream lifestyle, your dream partner, everything like that, right? Um, write it all down into a journal as well. So you you have like a, a text description on your perfect life. And the vision board basically brings that to life through visions. Yeah, exactly. It's it's like a mood board of your ideal life, right? You can create that through pictures of Pinterest and just create those uh, those collages and place that in a pl- in a in a spot that you know you're going to look at every day in your room or wherever, wherever you're going to spend some time, and just really truly hone in on that and and listen in, you know, because that is so important. Remember, everything that takes place in life whether it's an action or a reaction, starts with a thought. So your mind field is literally creating your reality. Someone said that um, we we suffer the most in our imaginations as opposed to reality, and that's so true. Classic example is whenever we see a really attractive girl and we start to then like run all these crazy thoughts through our head on oh, maybe she's into me, maybe she's not, she looked at me, she didn't look at me, maybe she's got a boyfriend, oh, she looks busy, you know, I'll talk to her and create all these, create all these like different um, terms. It's like you're writing your own terms and conditions, whereas if you just execute, you'd probably have a much more positive interaction, even if it ended in a rejection, but you'd spare yourself the mental torture of running that crazy like pirate, like that, that, like that simulation through your head, right? And um, you you will like you will see that your whole perception of life starts to change. So yeah, a vision board is absolutely absolutely essential if you're really trying to you know work towards a common goal or a life goal, and it'll also help you stay disciplined because you know that in order to achieve every single one of those. Uh, aspects of life then you've got to put in the work right now this uh we're kind of like coming up towards the the end of the lecture so dan did you have any any points you wanted to add on regarding discipline or just anything you wanted to share with the group um my only point matter how perfect you don't have to be perfect in everything that you do just show up as long as you keep showing up every single time discipline to show up you know you're gonna make it with that so that's, that's uh, it, the only other real point that I've got to make. perfect exactly man. we're all gonna make it boys you know just so long as, so long as you constantly work towards it then you will achieve your goals now, I wanted to share this with you guys, okay? So similar to this group, I have decided, I've been working on this project, I've decided to create my own Discord server, right? It's going to be very similar to this in terms of self-improvement, self-development. And I want to angle this towards people who are either currently in the process of, people who are interested in, people who are joining, people who have served or have served within the military, or if you are a dependent or a family member of someone who's served within the military, right? I want to angle this so as part of my campaign, as being my own like self-development coach, I want to bring and reach out to people who are from the military sphere. So if you guys know anybody who's currently interested in sort of turning their life around, if they're struggling with life and if they're part of the military or if someone who's going through a tough time, 
and is willing to fight against these negative habits that we're all working against, then shortly in the upcoming future, I'll, uh, I'll post a link and anyone who's interested can join that and start to populate and, and give some input towards that. Okay. Um, that server is going to be directed a lot towards people who are also from countries where there's a lot of instability or if they're from backgrounds where, you know, you're dealing with a lot of conflict in life. Okay. We're going to hold discourses on dealing with trauma, mental health, We're going to raise awareness for people who are, um, yes, that would include people who've had military, uh, mandatory service, especially that too, because what I want is to create an environment where people can share their different experiences from the military as well as their own personal struggles. And we can use that to, to build each other up. Right. And, um, I mean, my, my vision, my vision is quite big and I'm just giving you like, I'm basically just like kind of projecting out here right now. Okay. So, if, you know, I know there's, there's not that many people here right now, but if you know other people in the server who might be interested, please feel free to speak to them because I also want to teach or, or go over points of things like dealing with conflict, self-defense. I want people to, I want people who are also going to be, um, who also like, who have skill sets like myself, like medic, um, you know, I'm going to talk to, um, Saidi, Mr. Dr. John, so he can give like medical seminars, um, people who, you know, who've really experienced some hardships in life. We can really share these, these, uh, these life lessons with each other. Okay. So the discord I'm, I'm currently building up right now with, um, with like a small team of mods. Once it is fleshed out, I will drop the link in uh, lecture details or even ask if like maybe one of the admins can can put it in um in one of the uploads okay this is going to be very similar to like what's happening in like Hamza's server we're just taking it a spin on like dealing with a lot more trauma in life and you know creating a safe space for a lot of the veterans because uh, whether you may know it or don't know it like like mental health, PTSD and suicide is a huge, 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 huge thing in the armed forces. And I want to generate a, a space where I can get the vets, you know, in my corner so that we can create a space similar to this, very similar to this, to help people who are going through it just turn things around. Because uh, every day, every day, there's someone in the forces who takes their own life. And honestly, it's heartbreaking, man. It's um, it's something that really can be avoided, should be avoided, and not enough. Not enough is being done in the public sector. So that's also what my YouTube channel is going to be sort of angled at. You guys have spoken, and I've started to refine the niche. So it's self-improvement, you know, developing yourself through the, the pillars of self-improvement, right? Fitness, emotional health, mental health spiritual health, developing and cultivating good habits. And we're going to create our own army to essentially just beat back all this black pill terminology and all the black pillars out there because I'm, I'm sick and tired of seeing young guys like ourselves get sucked into this toxic realm. I was actually going to make a YouTube video about it, but I guess I'm doing it now. So here you are, guys. This is my call. This is my call to action for all of you boys. All right. You guys want to rise up against this and fight against, like actively fight against this bullshit, then stand by because I will have the server up and running and you're more than welcome. Okay. I'm looking for my own soldiers because believe it or not, we are at war. Our masculinity and our way of life is being threatened by this toxic black pill simp culture. I'm fucking sick of it. If you love dick, then yeah, you've, You'll, you'll love the server, man. The military, we don't, you know, we don't shame anyone. <laughs> pause. Big pause. Yeah, I know. But um, <laughs> thanks for the input. But yeah, boys, um, I want to just leave you with this quote. I know I said it in the previous lecture, but just remember, guys, okay, in the words of Winston Churchill, wherever you're going in life, whatever you're going through, if you're going through hell, keep going, right? Because 
trust me, having been someone who has been through his own mental hell, um, it does get better. It really does. Just, just hold on. Just keep pushing yourself, all right? So yeah, that is it for this lecture.